Okay, I'm going to try this and see if this will work for you guys. Um, this is an open office calc sheet, C-A-L-C, as in open office calc sheet. Um, it can be imported into uh, Excel. You'll have to do the conversion. I'm not sure if it will lose anything during the conversion. Um, I just happened to run open office on my home computer. Um, this was a uh, spreadsheet I set up for using and being able to play around with uh, designs. So I'm just trying to coordinate multiple things here. Um, this is one where I was playing around with different patterns, trying to uh, trying to come up with you know patterns that would work on the Master Weaver. Um, all I have is just the the basic instruction manual, which has a couple of uh, different patterns in it, but uh, not the big pattern book that has a hundred patterns in it. So I ended up buying this one was this one is actually one of those complicated patterns that's in the uh, that's in the main manual. <coughs> And uh, all I did was I set it up. These are the discs set up across the cylinder. Then this would be the... Uh, these are all done with if-then-else statements. And then this is what the cylinder sides would be. And for that particular disc, what would be being read, whether it would be raised or lowered on that particular side of the cylinder. Down here is the actual pattern, the sides of the cylinder that you would turn face up for actually weaving. So the very first uh, step in the weaving would be side four. So the first disc would be up, the second disc would be down, the third and fourth up, fifth and sixth down, and so on and so forth all the way across until you change to the next side, which would be seven. And all of this, these down here, just simply pull from side seven, it would be seven. Side seven is seven. Side four is side four. It just pulls this information and puts it in place down here. So you can actually uh, experiment, for instance. Um, Where's my mouse? Okay, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse there. See where the, the highlighted K is. I'm going to click in there, and I'm going to really quickly change this 6 to a 1 and enter. Notice that it just changed this whole column because it made it as a 1, starting at 1, on cylinder side one and therefore it also placed that down here because for this particular um, heddle this is what's going to happen when it's on side four it's going to be on side four or uh, uh, I'm sorry when it's on cylinder side four it's going to be on disc side four which means that it is going to be raised. So that in and of itself, you know, helps show down here. Now notice it messed up this particular pattern. So if I go back in here and click back in it again, type a six, put it back, it puts all those back in there again. So it allows you to see what the uh, pattern is going to look like. and. I just happened to arbitrarily use what they were using on the uh, on the little design tool where I think raised is black although really and truly it, it shows up better because that's going to actually be where you're seeing the warp threads um, I would actually prefer to have those as white but I just left it that way when I was playing with it um, if I go to one of my other pages. Um, in the book Learning to Weave, 
on page 117, a rising shed pattern that was a, a four shed. Um, I converted it to Master Weaver, and it was just kind of trial and error, just seeing what I would come up with. I knew what I needed here in the pattern, so I played with these until I got the correct patterning here. So it allowed me to actually figure out how I needed to do it. I knew it was going to be a 12 because, you know, this particular pattern I knew was going to be a 12 that was going to do an undulating type pattern here. So I just chose what I knew would be a rising shed where I would have two, but then the next one I wouldn't. So it, it actually was kind of trial and error, but I got to play around with it, and it didn't take me very long to figure this particular pattern out. And it is actually one of the patterns that's that's in the Master Weaver group. Um, there are plenty here, so you could have a really long set of patterns that you know flip flop back and forth, and it automatically fills in as you put this information. I'm sorry, I got a little off here. Um, it will automatically fill this information in as you plug in the cylinder sides for the actual pattern. And it will fill all this stuff in down here. Um, I just don't have anything down here. For instance, if I was to click in here and type 2, it fills it all the way in, all the way across. So it's actually quite easy to use um, as far as being able to manipulate it and being able to, to change things around and trying different patterns. Um, Okay, this one was also from page 117 and is a rising shed, and obviously it looks different. If I go back to the first one, that's what the first one looked like. This one is the second one, and it's a shorter pattern because it just goes. One, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. But, you know, again, it just took some playing around with it to figure out how to do this particular pattern on the Master Weaver. Um, a point twelve. This one, again, is a little bit different. It just kind of goes back and forth, too. And this one was on 118. Now, this one was a different one as well, from the same book, and it was from 118. It was what they call an undulating twill assignment, and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so it took me playing around with it to figure out exactly how I needed to, to put it together. And this is the pattern that you end up with. Again, it's just plugging in numbers and seeing which way you need it to go. Um, you you don't have to change any of these right here because this is a setting that is used to plug things in down here. You know, if this equals three in this row, it's going to be a two because you have an 8. I'm sorry. <sighs> the holding this thing where I can see it and, and where you can see it is <laughs> is not real easy. Okay, so for instance, <clears throat> on side 3, so I have a 3 here. Well, in the third column, for number 3, it's going to be a 2. Well, Yep, that's what it's got. So it automatically plugs this stuff in. The only thing that you ended up needing needing to, to play around with are these numbers up here, the disks. That's what you would end up changing to change your pattern. And the sequence that you're going to turn your sides in. So that's really the only things that you have to, to change around or, or move around 
to experiment with this particular spreadsheet. And to me it was a lot quicker and a lot easier to be able to figure out a pattern uh, using it this way because I could play with it really quick and easily and see whether or not something's going to work. Um, I really wasn't designing a new pattern. I was mainly trying to figure out how to use um, learning to weave patterns or, or a four, um, four shaft uh, pattern from the four shaft uh, pattern book on Master Weaver. Um, simply because I just I don't have a hundred dollars to spend to to have this thing photocopied. Um, it's a very good resource, and one of these days, yes, I'll save up and, and go ahead and buy it. But I've got a whole bunch of other things that I'm that I'm working on at the moment, and just can't afford it at this point. Um, this was something that you know was easy enough to play around with in my spare time. Uh, basket weave. second basket weave um, and I even did figure out that uh, you can actually uh, not set up rib weave as a twill um, and you can actually set up a tabby if you were to use a dowel rod and uh, and heddles like you would do for an inkle loom so you could actually do some pretty complicated uh, different patterns with this particular loom if you add a little bit to it and become a little bit ingenious in different ways of dealing with it. Um, I hope this helps you out. I will see if I can upload this particular uh, program, uh, not program, but the, the file to the files folder in uh, and Facebook and anybody who wants to use it can certainly download it and try. I don't happen to have uh, Microsoft Office on this particular computer so I haven't been able to try the conversion to see if it would lose anything in translation. Um, hopefully that has helped you out and hopefully you were able to understand what I was talking about here. And Hopefully I didn't get too far <laughs> off with my, uh, my filming. Um, talk to you again later. Bye.